Jesus. He is the mediator of the New Testament that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, who was under the First Testament? Israel. No other people, no other people ever came under the First Testament. But Christ died for the transgressions of those who were under the First Testament, that they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Who was the promise of the kingdom made? To whom? To Israel. Every covenant in the Bible is made with Israel. Every covenant that was made with Israel and made with the fathers, Christ sealed with his own blood. You know, this uh, idea of a universal Christ, uh, I get literature from an organization, they call themselves the light bearers and the torch bearers and so on and so on and so on. And brother and sister, if you want to read something about the cosmic Christ and the universal Christ and the cosmos and all of this, these people have it. And of course, they admit as you go through the reading, they talk about the East and the Far East and the religions of the East. And some of the speakers that they have are lamas in from Tibet to speak to them and give them their wisdom. But throughout their writings is this word, the cosmic Christ or the universal Christ. That's blasphemy. They preach this in a manner that makes a God who is a no God. They make their own God. And they call in all these other religions. They have people come in and talk to them about Buddha. And they teach the fundamentals of Buddhism right while they use the name of Christ. Of course, they're false prophets. But he said that he came and he died for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament. Verse 24. For Christ is not entered into the holy place made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor yet that he should suffer himself often, as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, once in the end of the world, hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And then he uses this parallel again. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. You see the parallel that Paul has all the way through here? He took upon him the seed of Abraham. He became flesh and blood to die as we must die, so that he was resurrected as we must be resurrected. And that his resurrection then proved that we will be resurrected and that we can be resurrected. And in that resurrection, we will not only judge the world, but we shall judge angels. I like Pastor Bob Record's uh, statement he made one time on a sermon he gave, I believe, here at one of the conferences. And he used the term that so many people think, well, we're going to be placed back in a position similar to Adam. And he said, when you read the book of Hebrews, you will realize that we shall be in a position higher than Adam ever was. And that's why kingdom ministers can say, thank God for the fall. Thank God for the fall. Some people are, they're fearful. They say, oh, wouldn't it have been wonderful if Adam and Eve would have continued in the Garden of Eden? No, brother, sister, God had that in his plan that the race of Adam was to fall, so he, through his own blood, his own power, his own death and resurrection, could exalt us to a position that Adam never held, higher than the angels. You take some time one of these days real soon, and you read all the way through the book of Hebrews. Let's read just a few more verses. Turn over to 10, chapter 10 and verse 12. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. From henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he had said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. And who is the covenant made with? Israel, the house of Israel, and the house of Judah. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them, and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. 
Do you realize that in order for us to be in this exalted position where we will judge in the world to come, that it is absolutely essential that we are sinless and our sins are completely forgiven? And that was done through the blood of Calvary. God has forgiven all the sins of His people through the blood of Calvary. He's not going to put sinners up there to judge His kingdom. So how does He accomplish it? Sheds His own blood for the sacrifice to put away those sins. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. There is nothing that you or I or anyone can ever do to put away those sins. It has been done, Christ said, as He died on the cross. It is finished. It is finished. There's no work you can do. There's nothing you or I will ever be able to do that will put away the sins that we have committed or will commit in this mortal body. God has provided for Himself through His own power and His own blood the ability to bring a race of resurrected men and women who will rule in the world to come higher than Adam ever was and higher than the angels. Know ye not that ye shall judge angels. Now that's what the cross means. And would to God that we could get this idea across to the leaders in this nation and the people that Jesus Christ has died to renovate this earth and create a kingdom such as this world has never known and place this people in a position they have never known because of Calvary. Brother, sister, someday soon you're going to see something happen in this nation when this people get to the point where they understand the blood on the cross and the resurrection. You'll think that this nation has been swept with fire and it will be the fire of the Lord when they finally understand what God has done on the cross of Calvary for His people, the people who were under the First Testament and who are now under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ.